Hello, I'm James Hollis, uh, speaking on behalf of the Young Society of Washington. Um, one of the common experiences we all have is the encounter with fear. Um, fear is um, natural because life is dangerous. In fact, it's lethal, if you may have noticed. And, and we all develop sort of reactive patterns to it. And one of the things I've become aware of through the years as a human being, and, but also as, as a um, psychotherapist, is the role that fear plays in organizing our lives, how we protect ourselves against our fears. And our, our fears often are sort of driving uh, the energies of our life, our avoidances, our compulsivities. And so we always need at some level to take on that which our defenses are protecting us from. It's kind of counterintuitive. We want to stay protected from them, but the more we stay protected, the, the more we stay locked into our reactive patterns. So, for example, there are two sort of existential threats to the survival and well-being of all of us, overwhelmment and abandonment. Uh, you know, we learn as children, as infants, the world's big and we're not, the world's powerful and we're not. And so we learn our comparative powerlessness and we have to adapt to the circumstances around us. So we, we have a whole series of logical responses to that existential fact that the world's big and we're not. The most primitive of our defenses, and it shows up in so many different ways, is simply avoidance, stay out of harm's way, back off. So we have simple avoidance, we have procrastination, we have suppression where we push things away deliberately and consciously, we have repression where we push it into the underground unconsciously to protect our fragile egos, um, we, we have numbing and, and projection onto others, and we have an entire culture out there with a constant 24-7 buzz which helps distract us from our fears, and we can also have patterns of disassociation. All of those are avoidant patterns, so one needs to ask, where are my patterns of avoidance? Where am I not dealing with those aspects of my life that I need to deal with? Secondly, we can often hook into a power complex and it shows up in intimate relationships, it shows up in social organizations as well. That one of the ways of coping with the magnitude of the world is trying to get control of it in one way or the other. And often parents are very controlling of their children because they can. Or, or people in positions of supervision can be abusive and controlling to employees and so forth. And many times that's driven by a personal script, a personal complex. Uh, and thirdly, we have patterns of compliance. To, to deal with the world, give it what it wants. And we have to ask ourselves, where do our patterns of compliance uh, show up? Where has that complicity compromised our integrity, contradicted our values? Then we realize there's an assignment that comes to us in the face of that recognition. For the other experience that's a threat of, is abandonment. Now, abandonment we often internalize in very personal ways, like what's wrong with me, that you are not caring for me or present as I need you to be present. And so we internalize it as a wound to self-worth or self-esteem, and we all have wounds to self-esteem, of course. And that'll show up in two different ways, one of which is, and the most common, is through patterns of avoidance and self-sabotage. I'll just not show up because I'm incapable of showing up, I, I, I will avoid certain things because I'm not worthy of them. Or the reverse, that's also in response to poor self-esteem, that's a kind of um, uh, uh, sort of overcompensation where people are driven to, say, acquire status symbols of power and money and, and so forth, to say, look how important I am or look how good and generous I am. And that too is coming out of an unconscious compensation for that elemental fear of unworthiness. Or secondly, we wind up in, again, the power complex, a kind of narcissistic defense. All of us have a wound uh, that is narcissistic in character that doesn't make us narcissists, where we are constantly defending ourselves and, and often in many ways, you know, denying the, the reality of what we've said or done or how people experience us in order to, to maintain that rather shaky sense of self. Or, or thirdly, we have an inordinate neediness that keeps showing up in relationships where our unfinished business from the past continues to impose itself on relationships and ultimately, unfortunately, drives people away. 
the very thing we fear is produced by our own behaviors. So all of these defenses we have are perfectly natural. If humankind hadn't found ways of coping with fear, we still wouldn't be here as a species on this planet. On the other hand, these patterns take on a um, sort of life of their own, a certain autonomy. They create lifelong patterns in our lives. So from time to time, we really have to ask ourselves the question, where are my avoidances showing up in my life and, and undermining an authentic mode of self-expression? Uh, where am I perhaps complying uh, with pressures from outside that actually violate my integrity or my values? Um, or where am I caught in, in, in some kind of archaic defense of a shaky self and I, I need to be more uh, present and, and trusting in myself? These are important questions and the failure to ask them means that I'm living in bad faith with myself and of course bad faith with other people. Now, if you're interested in this subject uh, or subjects like it, I, I would invite you to consider taking a class or attending a lecture from the Jung Society of Washington. Thank you.